Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now this tutorial comes from an actual person that watches my shows and watches the videos on YouTube and I thought, you know, I'm going to help you out uh, and his name is Kenneth. Kenneth writes, I've been watching your videos and I'm thrilled that I found them because I was helpless with Photoshop Elements 12 before your videos. I've learned so many tricks thanks to you and I can't thank you enough for what you do, especially for free. I was wondering if you could maybe do a video on how to edit a car with a very cool background. I have a 68 Cougar, that's my pride and joy, and I'd love to learn how to edit it into some great backgrounds, something like graffiti walls or a cool ocean front parking spot, etc. I just don't know where to start. It really seems like it's kind of overwhelming thinking of trying to do that. I'm going to attach some sample uh, pictures of my car just in case you want to make a video of them. And here I am making a video for Kenneth. I would really appreciate any type of help you can spare. Now, Kenneth sent me two pictures. And Kenneth, unfortunately, your pictures, the resolution was not really high. I don't know if somebody shot them with a cell phone or what. But I did the very, very best I can do with this edit. And what I'm going to show you here, we have a frontal car shot, which I didn't use, but I did use your side car shot. And this edit will work great for either one. Now, anybody else out there wanting to put something in front of a cool background, you will do it the exact same way. Matter of fact, we're going to probably call this video changing, uh, you're changing the background to something cool. And we're going to go ahead and get started with that. So I'm going to minimize this out of the way. And here you see that I have a picture of Kenneth's car. This is his, uh, I believe he said a 68 Cougar. It is a really bad looking ride. And, you know, it would be great to ride around town in this thing. I'm sure you uh, turn a lot of heads. So the first thing you have to do, Kenneth, is you have to isolate the car from the current background. We have to cut it out of the background. And we do this, I'm using my Wacom tablet is what I'm using, but you can use your mouse and it will work just fine. The first thing you want to do is you want to select your car. So you can go up to the selection tool under select and choose add. And I'll choose add here, a new selection. And then all we got to do is just start drawing around your car and making a selection of the car itself. So you'll make a selection and folks, this could be anything. This could be any type of, uh, uh, you know, item or picture you're working on. Now, don't worry. You see here, I'm going outside the lines a little bit. I'm going to make my... Um, cursor my brush size a little smaller using my left and right bracket keys so I'm just making a cut here I'm just cutting everything out and make sure you have everything selected in your selection so we are just making a selection and I'm sure you've probably selected many things in the past very very easy to do to make a selection of a car uh, you know and if you're using the full version of Photoshop it makes it a little easier because you can select by color and that makes it even easier so make sure you have everything selected and again, as you see, I'm going outside the lines a little bit. I'm going over the car, but that's okay because I'm going to show you how to clean that up. So there we go. So we have a rough selection of our car made. And you want to make sure everything is in there. As you can see, the back bumper, if you can see that, is not in there. So we're going to make sure we have that back bumper in there. Just like so. All right. Now we went way out the back there. So now you'll go down and we're going to click on subtract. So we're going to start subtracting around the car. And I like to use a smaller brush size because then I can get into the nitty gritty parts of the car here. Again, we're going to add this back in here. Just like so. And then we're going to start subtracting again. And again, if you just go right near the object like the tires. And we're probably going to go a little bit too close there. So you're going to make your selection, just keep cleaning it up. The hardest thing to a great edit is a great selection. So if you do your selection perfectly, your edit's going to work a lot better. It will be uh, amazing how much better the selection would be, or the edit, I'm saying, uh, once you do all the selecting. Selection is hard because it is a very tedious process. Tedious means, you know, time-consuming. And what I like to do when you get to a certain point here is blow the picture up. Now, I can use the Alt key and just roll my mouse, and I can get the picture to blow itself up. So go to Zoom, blow your picture up so you can see the more detail. 
of the car itself. And then just keep making your selection around here. So as you can see, this is the toughest part. And don't worry if you miss a couple parts. The main thing is, is to make sure all of the car is selected. If there's some of the background still showing, we can get rid of that. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to do that also, folks, because it's very easy to do. Uh, I am using Photoshop Elements 13, but Kenneth, this will work absolutely fine in Photoshop 12. Uh, Photoshop Elements 12, it'll work great. Not a big deal. But make sure you have all of the car selected. That's what you want. If you get a little bit of background, let it go. We can clean that up here uh, in post-processing, uh, you know, or even more post-processing, I guess we could say, because this is all post-processing, right? This is what we're doing here. We're, we're processing the picture out. And we're going to just make this selection around here. Um, again, make sure anything that's not added is added because you can't add the detail of the car, but we can definitely take the detail of the background away. That's key. So there we go. So this is how to do how to add a really cool background to something. And I'm going to even show you where to find those cool backgrounds. So you don't have to you don't have to make them. Uh, there's a lot of great artists in this world that like to uh, share what they do and uh, let you use it. You know, as long as you're not making money with it, you can use it. Uh, you know, don't sell these pictures to anybody because then you're going to have to give some royalty fees back to the people that we're getting the backgrounds from. I'm going to show you how to get those. Um, so that looks pretty good. Once you get the car selected, we're going to take this and uh, subtract that little detail out down here. Once you get the car selected, all we have to do then is hit Control or Command J. And what that's going to do now is we're going to uh, shut the visibility off on the car. And you'll see now that we have the car isolated. That's what we need. We need the car because we're replacing the background. Or you need the motorcycle or you need the, the portrait, the person you're working on, whatever that is, to replace it with a cool background, right? You have to get the selection made. And you can see here where I do have some problem areas, but we're going to leave those, okay? The main thing is, is do I have all the car selected? And you can see here I don't have all the tires selected. So we are going to uh, undo layer copy. We still should have the selection going. We're going to add that so we can add this more of this tire on here. Again, I'd rather be I'd rather have too much background than, than not enough car because I can't add the detail of the car. All right, taking a quick look here again. All right, that looks pretty good. We're gonna add down here. It looks like there's a there's a shock or a stabilizer or something on the back of the car. Again, commander control J. Take another look and make sure we have it now. Yeah, you can see I got the whole tire there. I got the whole tire there. And I got some of the black around here, but don't worry. Don't 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 uh, threat over that or fret over that. We're now going to lower this down. I'm just uh, zooming it back out. So you'll do, uh, you'll go up to actually edit and you can actually zoom out, uh, out and in. So uh, there's great ways to do your edits there. So you can zoom in and out or you can use your, I use the alt or the option key on my Mac and roll my mouse. Uh, you can use your alt key on your Windows machine, roll your mouse. And what I mean by rolling it is the little roller in between uh, the left and the right click of your mouse that will zoom it in and out very easy to do stuff like this so the next thing we want to do here is now we got to find a really cool background because kenneth mentioned graffiti so he gave me the idea uh, because i said what cool background do i want for this car so what we're going to do now is we are going to jump over and we're going to go to google okay so google all i did in google here is i typed in graffiti and i just did a search and then i searched for images so I'm image searching, and I'm looking here, just, you know, looking now through the different images. And when you find something you want to use, you know, you want a really, really cool background or something on there. Let's say you're going to use this one. I would suggest, back up here for a minute, I would suggest you click on uh, search tools. Click the little pull-down menu for size and make sure it's large because you want the maximum amount of resolution possible when you're doing these edits. You don't want, you know, something half-baked. So and once you find an image you like, right-click on it, do Save Image As. And I created a folder here called Backgrounds. And we're going to call this one, uh, as you can see, I've been working here this morning on this edit. So Graffiti. And this is Graffiti number four. Select OK. 
So now we have graffiti number four. Once you have that done, it's very easy to replace your backgrounds. So let's go ahead and minimize my browser all the way. And now what we want to do is put that new background behind Kenneth's car here. So all we got to do now is we are going to simply go to edit. Oh, I'm still on a Chrome there. Edit. And we're going to go to, I'm sorry, go to file. Yes, I can make mistakes too, people. That's okay. Go to file and go to place. We're going to place the image now. So there's our image, Graffiti 4. That's why you want to make a folder called backgrounds or something in your pictures folder so you can find the stuff you're looking for. Click OK. And as you can see there, uh, we filled the picture with the graffiti. Okay, so let's stretch it out. Make sure it covers your whole entire background. So everything in the background is covered. Once it does that, click OK. And now we have a beautiful picture of Kenneth's car with a beautiful graffiti. Oh, wait, wait. You can't see Kenneth's car. Hmm. That is a problem. But you know what? No, it's not. We're working with layers. Layers are so easy to use, and that's why we do multiple layers, so we can move them around. I'm going to click on the picture here now of Kenneth's car, and we're going to put this layer on top of the graffiti. So move it up and drop it. Now Kenneth's car is in front of the graffiti. But wait, Jack, there's one problem here is Kenneth's car is floating. So maybe it's a space car? I don't know. Hmm. Probably not. So we're going to click the Move tool, and we're going to move Kenneth's car down and put it back on the street. So we're going to put it back on the street there, wherever you want to put it. Once you get it where you want it sitting, click OK, because now it looks like it's on the roadway, right? It's not floating up in the air. You can move it down more if you want, just a little bit more there. And now it looks pretty cool. So remember before I told you, don't worry about the background. Well, the background's showing through, and you're like, Jack, wait, this, this is a bad edit. This looks absolutely horrible. Well, it does, but you know what? We have the power of what's called a layer mask. So we're going to click on the layer mask, click on the image itself of just the car. Okay, we just have this image selected on our layer palette. Click on the mask. Click the mask itself. Make sure you're painting with black. Let's select a brush tool. And now you can start going around this stuff and start hiding this and pulling the background out. So I'm just going to go over. I'm down at the tire here at the bottom, the front tire. You'll see my uh, mouse moving around. And just very, very lightly touch around there. Don't make big dents in the tires or anything. You don't want Kenneth to be driving on square tires. And anywhere else you see around this car that looks like some of the background might be showing through, uh, you can just cut that off. And you'll see that you're pulling the graffiti out and you're dropping the background. So that works pretty good. And we'll do the same thing here across the trunk. It looks like it's just a little high. Just drop it down a little bit. Make sure you get those lines nice and straight. It does take a little practice. Uh, Kenneth, don't let it be overwhelming. It's not. It's very, very easy. If I can do this, any of you out there can do these edits. Anybody can do these edits if I can do it. Believe me, I just put a lot of time in Photoshop Elements, and I've learned some little tricks along the way. Um, but you can see now that we have a really cool uh, background there on Kenneth's car. So it's really nice. Uh, there's a nice graffiti background. Now, here's another trick, folks, um, that I'm going to show you that I really like to do. When I'm working with backgrounds, uh, whatever backgrounds and whatever it's for, if it's for weddings, if it's for parties, if whatever I do a background for, background change, if I'm changing clouds in the sky, Maybe I want to get a few different looks uh, in a few different fills for it. And I don't want to do that edit over and over and over and over and over. I don't want to do that selection over all the time. So what I tend to do and what I really like to do, it's very simple, is to add multiple backgrounds and look at them and see what I like the best. To do that, let's go back up under File and go back to Place. And we're going to place another one. I'm going to place, um, let's say... Let me see which one I want here. It doesn't really matter. Let's take the first one. So I'm going to place this one now. All right. So when I place it, you can see it. Again, it doesn't fit. But what we're going to do here is we are going to stretch it out so it does fit. And that's why you want the high resolution pictures when you're looking for this stuff. I'm just going to pull it so it covers all of the other picture. It looks like we're good there. Click my little green checkbox on the bottom. And now... Check this out. I can pull Kenneth's layer here, the car, right above it and drop it. And now I have Kenneth's car on a new background. 
I can even shut the visibility off on the other one, but you can't see it anyway because it's hidden. So you can have multiple backgrounds. But again, be careful. Make sure you select the Move tool when you're on the layer of the car and pull it down to make sure the wheels are touching on the ground. You know, we don't want it up here floating in the air. That would be bad. You want it touching the ground so it looks like it's sitting and it's parked in front of that graffiti wall. So, folks, you know, it's very easy to do. Again, if I can do these edits, you can do them, too. It's just it's very simple, simple to do. Um, it's just it's time consuming to learn Photoshop elements, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever. And I can tell you, if you want to get the upper hand on it, I do have the online courses. If you go to jtclearning.com, uh, the courses are very inexpensive. I mean, very inexpensive for you to take those. Um, I believe there's 50 videos in each course. And uh, you just simply sign up. There's no tests, no quizzes or anything. But it's videos that start you from the very beginning of Photoshop Elements and takes you all the way through the expert tools. So we talk about quick edits, guided edits, and we take you into the expert tools so you can learn all that. So it's very inexpensive, and I would recommend you sign up for one of those. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can always email me at jackstechcorner at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you folks out there, uh, as Kenneth did. And Kenneth, thank you so much uh, for for kicking me into gear and saying, Jack, you know, can you help me along with this? Because it helps me to, to learn even more about the editor, and I love doing edits. Again, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube videos. If you're not subscribed, spread the word around and get other people here watching these videos. And I'll talk to you next time on Jack's Tech Corner with another Photoshop Elements tutorial or taking great pictures. See ya.